Welcome to the 2022 Independent Bowl, which pits the Saint, uh, the Thomas A. Stewart Griffins from Peterborough, Ontario, champions of CASA against the St. Michael College. Kerry Blues, the CESA third place finalists, as we welcome you into Alumni Stadium at the University of Guelph. Jack Moore and Dwayne Cameron along with you. Day number two starts. We have a fun matchup. It should be good. You see Thomas A. Stewart on your screen, the champions from the Peterborough area, and they have a chance to cap their undefeated season off with an offset championship here today, Dwayne. Yeah, and Jack, Peterborough's traditionally been a stronghold for uh, for high school football. Crestwood's been a, a, a good program for a long time, uh, and at various times, St. Peter's, Holy Cross, and the like. And uh, so for this, you know, for this uh, young Thomas A. Stewart team coming out here, they've done a good job of getting here and going through that schedule undefeated because those are, those are not easy games that they've played. And then on the other side, St. Mike's is coming into this game. Didn't have the season that they were expecting, but still in an offsa bowl game as the third place finisher in CESA and have a chance to cap off a, a bit of a disappointing season, but have a chance to cap it off with an offset champion. Yeah, I think their record maybe is a little bit of an outlier. They didn't have a lot of regularly scheduled games, so they went to the United States uh, and played three exhibition games down there. They were 0-3 in those games, but that accounts for you know some of the discrepancies in their record there. This is a talented football team at St. Mike's. It's always a talented football team. CESA always produces strong football teams, and we will see St. Mike's get the ball to start this game as Thomas A. Stewart from right to left on your screen will kick this one off, and it's Lucas Barnett to kick it off for the Griffins. Day number two at the 2022 Offsa Bowl Festival in Guelph at the University of Guelph. And St. Mike's deep to return, Gavin Green and Vincenzo D'Amico. And it will be D'Amico on the return from his own 18. D'Amico gets across the 30 and a great special teams tackle by Thomas A. Stewart. Devin Johnson getting downfield and St. Mike's will take over on their own 30. Yeah, fantastic play. Devon Johnson was tracking it the whole way. I saw him when he got about 20 yards away from the, uh, from the returner. He beat the blocker across his face and you see him slice across the field in there and make the open field one-on-one -on -one tackle. That's a great job to start this game. Luke Montemuro is the starting quarterback for St. Mike's. Comes out first and 10 from his own 30-yard line on the left hash and lines up under center. First offensive possession of the game for St. Mike's as Montemurro will toss this one out and cutting through the defense, getting close to the line to gain and picking up 13 was big number 37, Max Barrett. Well, we see a unique offensive formation there. They come out with double tight end and two wings to the weak side. You see it right there at the top of your screen. Right, so they've added a lot of gaps to that weak side. Thomas A. Stewart's going to have to make sure defensively, defensive coordinator's got to get his guys back on the sideline after this series and make sure that they align to that formation. They were short gap-wise just based on the number of players that St. Mike's put into the short side of the field there, and that led to that gain. So they'll line up first and 10 from their own 43 after the gain of 13, and it is Barrett standing back at running back for St. Mike's. Handoff will go inside, nowhere to go. Good rally to the ball by the Thomas A. Stewart defense, and Thomas Highland gets maybe a yard, second and nine. And we see this offense very limited motion. Does that have to do with playing those American opponents in exhibition games? Yeah, I'm not sure, but from a stylistic standpoint, it's not something in modern-day football that, uh, that you're going to get a lot of. Thomas A. Stewart may be the first time that they've seen uh, an opponent play with these type of formations. We see them coming out here in a spread 32 formation. This is what you're a little bit more used to with Canadian football. Second and nine. St. Mike's has to convert. Flag flies, and that one is caught. A nice catch, and getting down to the 55 is Gavin Green. It was a gain of 12, but we'll see what the call is on the field. It might be offside against St. Mike's. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the call is. We'll see it here in a second. But number 46, Riley Keenan, a linebacker for Thomas A. Stewart. Jack, if he commits to that a little bit quicker, he's got a pick six. He almost stepped in front of that and took that to the house. And it is against St. Mike's, so that will push them back to their own 38-yard line. So that first down negated, and a loss of five will bring up second and 14 for the Cary Blues. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see here. They get, they're behind the sticks, obviously, here at second and 14. I imagine we're going to see a spread offense, kind of get five receivers, maybe empty the backfield out with the running back out as well, too. Max Barrett, the running back, had the solid run on first down on the first play of the game. 
Second play went to Thomas Highland, and now after the penalty, second and 14. High snap, corralled. Montemuro flips it off to Barrett on the screen, has linemen in front of him, picks up the first down and more into Griffin's territory before, before finally being taken down by Nathan Thompson. And the Kerry Blues convert. It didn't matter if it was second and nine or second and 14. Well, good they executed play call here. Absolutely. Good executed play call. They run the screen really well. You'll see here once he catches it, there's not a defender. There's only one defender in a blue jersey in sight. So he's already going to He's going to have already achieved the, the needed yardage uh, to be gained for the first down before any of those defenders show up there. Excellent execution by St. Mike's on that second and extra long play call. They stay in this spread formation now. First and 10 from the 45 of the Thomas A. Stewart Griffins. Montemurro in shotgun, low snap, rolls to the ground, and he was down. They will mark him for a loss of five yards, so second and 15, second and long coming up again. Yeah, struggle with the snap, obviously, had to go down. I'm not quite sure if his knee was on the ground when he picked it up, but that's a call of the official. We'll get them second and 15 back here. We saw them execute on second and 14 uh, uh, two plays ago with the, uh, the tailback screen. We'll see if they throw the ball vertically down the field or whether they look to get that uh, the screen or draw game going again on second and long here, Jack. We saw some high snaps and then overcompensating with the low snap there. So second and 15 here for the Kerry Blues from the Thomas A. Stewart 50. Montemurro has pressure, rolling back, throws it incomplete. It goes down, getting home there for Thomas A. was Avery Armour. And it's third and 15, and St. Mike's has to punt this one away. Well, he was looking to the strong side of the field. They ran a bit of a divide concept, a post by the inside number three receiver and a corner by number two. Both were covered. Excellent job uh, by the Thomas A. Stewart secondary. The defensive backs covering down on all those receivers. And really, that was just to throw it away and avoid the sack right there. There was nothing open for him to look to. So Thomas A. will be back deep to return. Caleb Parkhurst and Miles Saligo. This one bounces at the 28 before Parkhurst picks up. There'll be a no yards flag, and he will be brought down. So just a step away from breaking away from that shoestring tackle by Margarelli. Well, and very interesting um, punt return alignment there uh, for Thomas H. Stewart. They had two returners deep, which is common, but then they had a third guy in that intermediate area right there in case the kick wasn't that far, and I believe that was number two, Caleb Parkhurst. Right there. The interesting thing about that is, Jack, that means they're playing short in the front. They've got three returners back. They don't have enough guys in the front. Watch for St. Mike's to recognize and realize that punt return formation right there and run a fake at some point in time in this game. So Colby Wood comes onto the field for Thomas A. Stewart. Double tight end set for the Griffins as they run their first play from offense. It'll be a handoff, and they'll go outside to the near side of the field. And Daniel Amos taken down. Just a gain of three on the play will bring up second and seven. Yeah, decent game by Amos, a good athlete. He gets out here in space. I feel like he could have turned this up a little bit earlier and uh, gained a little bit more yardage, but he was content running side to side. You see with that kick out block there on 42, turn that up the field. He continues to run laterally side to side, and they string it out and rally it and limit the gain to just three yards. Cole Christie on the tackle, and now Amos down on the field for Thomas A. Stewart. Yeah, that was a cut tackle right there, so i got to assume whatever it is that he's dealing with is, is kind of from the hips down. Uh, there was no contact made in the upper body right there. It was a cut tackle, so I assume it's something, a uh, lower body, uh, sorry, a lower body injury that he's dealing with. So Thomas A. runs their first play from scrimmage. It's a gain of three. We'll bring up second and seven, and they'll make some personnel changes here on offense as Colby Wood goes back to the sideline, and Thomas A., you look at their schedule, they really ran through the Casa District en route to getting to the Offsa Bowl games this year. And in the playoff, that last win against Bayside was a 45-7 to victory. Yeah, really no significant challenges. I think their closest game uh, all season was an eight-point victory in league play against Holy Cross early in the year. Uh, in terms of their regular season victories right there. They've been kind of runaway games that they've, you know, they've had control of those games by si significant scores throughout. You know, in the notes that we've received from the coaching staff about the players prior to the game, the Thomas A. Stewart coaches say really watch for Colby Wood. They really like him as their quarterback. He thinks he's a significant key to running this offense. Well, we'll need to run it effectively here on second and seven from their own 38-yard line. Wood will keep it himself. Colby Wood cuts across the 40, and he'll be about three yards short on the gain of three. 
So a third down coming up, and Thomas A. Stewart will have to punt this one away. Yeah, I think it's too early to go ahead and go for this. At this point in time, you're backed up in your own end. You don't want to give St. Mike's a short field if they're able to stop you right here. Uh, wind is really not a factor. In fact, when I look out at the flag right now, it's just kind of it's not really doing a lot of movement at all. If anything, it's going in the opposite direction of yesterday. So they got the wind here. You could probably get a good kickoff and, uh, and pin St. Mike's deep back in their end. So Thomas A to punt this one away, and it is Wood, the quarterback, to punt. Corrals the high snap. Flag down on the play immediately on the far side of the field, and St. Mike's looking for a big return. St. Mike's gets the edge. Gavin Green back to the Thomas A line of scrimmage where Nathan Thompson makes the tackle. We'll see what the flag well, on I the field is. I can tell you is. what the flag is right now. Thomas A. Stewart has 13 players on the field. right? Based on where that flag came from, it comes from the referees that count pre-snap pre-snap the numbers and I counted St. Mary's for or sorry uh, St. Mike's first just to make sure they had 12 so I checked uh, I checked the numbers for Thomas A. Stewart and I, I believe I counted 13 so I think it's going to be too many men on the field. You see the referee going to talk to the St. Mike's captain so and then the St. Mike's coaching staff's given the signal to decline the penalty so they'll take the field position. As somebody who had those conversations with referees in high school, I can tell you a lot of the time those were, this is what the penalty is, you're going to decline it. Yeah, I mean, there's oftentimes where the referees, they know what the answer is going to be, so they don't even worry about having you check with the coaching staff. So good field positioning for St. Mike's as they line up in spread formation. First and 10 from the Thomas A. 41-yard line. Gavin Green gets the handoff after the big return. And Gavin Green gets to the outside. A flag comes down. It'll be a block in the back against St. Mike's. So this big run down to the 23, a gain of 18, will be negated. Yeah, Logan Wilson's going to get called for, and it, it is the correct call. I saw it right away. And the unfortunate thing for Logan is it was unnecessary. Right, It was unnecessary. I really feel like uh, Gavin had, had gotten the edge. He had gotten outside the corner right there. And so, you know, in that situation, Logan's just trying to help out his running back. He's just trying to make a play right there. So... Um, you know, obviously he's going to get called for it, but it's a, it's a situation he'll learn from and make the correct decision next time, but it definitely was the right call. So it is a block in the back against St. Mike's 10-yard penalty. will line them up first and 20 from the Thomas A. 51-yard line. Max Barrett back at running back. High snap. On the ground, and it will be recovered by Montemuro. So another loss on the play because of a bad snap. This time it's a high one. And that's a loss of eight yards and will bring up second and very long, second and 28. Well, it's a challenge to have any consistency from an offensive standpoint if that's something. If, you, you know, if you're struggling on a consistent basis with the quarterback center exchange, it's hard to get to the next level of your offense, which is simply either throwing the ball or handing it off because it disrupts the timing on everything. So, uh, I mean, it is second and extra long. I would anticipate a relatively uh, kind of benign conservative call here. Maybe go back to the running back screen again, a wide receiver hit screen. Uh, just something where there's no chance of making a catastrophic error here. Get a few yards and then punt the ball back. Second and 28 for St. Mike's. From their own 51, another high snap. This one corralled by Montemuro. Nowhere to go, but he breaks away from the defense. Montemuro gets crunched down behind the original line of scrimmage. Devon Johnson making the tackle, so a two-yard loss. Looked like it could have been a 20-yard loss, but Montemuro did a good job just to negate it to two yards. Yeah, he does do a good job first to corral on the football, making sure it's not turned over, but then making the most out of this. To be honest, Jack, there was a moment right about now I thought, gosh, he might get out of there. But this is the second time now already in this game we've seen Devon Johnson come up and make a solid open field tackle with significant physicality. Caleb Parkhurst back to return with Miles Saligo. High punt, and this one will be fielded in the air, and they blow it dead as Nathan Thompson gets it back at his own 49-yard line, and Thomas A. will take over first and 10. Yeah, you rarely see that anymore where referees blow those uh, short high kicks dead. Um, but he did it there. It was actually a very smart play in that situation by Thompson of going ahead and fielding it in the air. He wasn't one of the primary returners. Um, so oftentimes players in those situations, they'll just let it go and they'll go try to block somebody. But by catching it right there, he maximized the amount of field position, did it hit the ground and bounce and roll back. Well, and if the referees hadn't have negated the play right away, that would have been a 15-yard no yard. So that's another heads-up play 
as Thomas A. takes over first and 10 from their own 49. Three running backs in the set, and a handoff up the middle will go for a gain of eight yards. Solid run. And it's a second and short coming up here for Thomas A. on the run by Jordan Feely. Yeah, similar formation that we saw St. Mike start in. We got the double tight end formation, right? And then you got the two fullbacks in the backfield. So you need to have D-gap run defenders that will relate to the tight ends on either side. But then you got to have two kind of apex floating defenders that move based off where those two fullbacks go. St. Mike's didn't didn't play it that way. They didn't move with the gap players that were coming from the second level, those fullbacks I talked about, and they gave up eight yards on that play. Feely back in and running back, and Wood will keep it himself on the quarterback keeper, pick up a first down, and he'll drive himself forward for a gain of six. First and ten, Thomas A. as they cross into St. Mike's territory. Yeah, another good run here. And as I just mentioned previously, anytime you're going to have moving gaps in the box with a run defensively in order to, to be effective, you, your defenders have got to move with those second-level gap players, whether it's fullbacks, whether it's receivers plussing back into the box to block on the edge defender in the run. You've got to have people relating to those. Otherwise, you're, you know, your first contact usually is going to be five or six yards down the field, and you're going to give up significant gains in the run. First and 10 for Thomas A. from the St. Mike's 45. Wood drops back to pass. Colby Wood has it knocked out of his hands. He recovers the ball. Great job getting home there by Nolan Klubel. Yeah, great rush off the edge. And, I mean, they're, they're fortunate that that wasn't a fumble. Uh, it was, certainly was a forward pass. The arm was coming forward, but he got there so fast. You see him beat the block off the edge initially here uh, where that was close to being a fumble. Great play initially with the pass rush and then getting your hand up, knocking the football out of the QB's hand. So second and ten. From the 46-yard line for Thomas A. As Colby Wood will set up the offense again. I've seen on second down, they like to go to those quarterback runs. Daniel Amos back in the game for Thomas A. And it's play action as it's a swing pass to the near side. Barnett makes the catch, drive forward, and he'll be about four yards short of the line to gain. So third and four coming up here for Thomas A. And decision time for the coaching staff. Yeah, I would say Mike's had enough guys around there to be able to make a play. I thought that uh, I thought he actually did a pretty good job right there in terms of maximizing Amos did in terms of getting what he could out of there. You see a number of white jerseys from a defensive standpoint for St. Mike's were in the area. Uh, I felt like that screen developed fairly quickly. You know, if they had been a little bit more patient to draw some of those pass rushers in before dumping it down to, uh, to Amos. But... Uh, as it is, he was he got as much as he could on it. Punting unit on the field for Thomas A. But again, remember, Colby Wood is the quarterback of this team. And it will be a fake as Thompson drives forward. He'll pick up the first down and drive continuously inside the 30. So a gain of 10 for Thomas A. on the fake punt. And they have first and goal inside the St. Mike's 30. Yeah, well, it wasn't an unreasonable distance to have to go to get the first down, right? They only needed five yards. It's kind of you're already in your opponent's end of the field, so it's worth the gamble. And then the other thing is St. Mike's is playing with two returners right now, right? So Thomas A. Stewart has 12 players involved in the box in terms of their punt formation. St. Mike's is only playing with 10 guys because they got two returners back, so you can't account for all the blockers in the front, uh, and you're more likely to give up a fake when you're using two returners. First and 10 from the St. Mike's 29, and a handoff up the middle goes to Nathan Thompson again. And he'll be about a yard short, so it'll be second and one here. Yeah, well, Nate Thompson was the other guy that the coaches talked about really keying on on the offensive side of the football, right, for, uh, for Thomas A. Stewart. And we see why already. He's an effective runner on the inside between the tackles. As you see him weave his way through this traffic here, you see he's bigger than most of the guys that are attempting to tackle him. So he's been effective for them to this point. So they'll keep him in the backfield with Jordan Feely and Lucas Barnett as Wood goes under center, second and one. He'll hand off to Thompson. Thompson takes it down to the 10-yard line before being taken down. They'll mark him down at the 12, a gain of eight yards, and that moves the sticks. Yeah, he's just following those two fullbacks, Jack. Wherever those two fullbacks are leading, that's where the football's going, and he's just getting in behind them. and and following them, and he's oftentimes not being touched until he's four or five yards down the field already. Uh, if you're St. Mike's, you're going to have to do a little bit better job of adjusting to those moving fullbacks in order to, to plug those gaps up and not give Thompson such a downhill lane to run through. 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. 0-0 Thomas A. Stewart and St. Michael's College in the 2022 Independent Bowl. 
First and 10 from the 12 for Thomas A. Stewart. Feely takes the handoff, bounces it outside, and Feely stays on his feet. He'll drive forward, and he'll be marked down at the one. That'll be enough for a first down. First and goal coming up for the Griffins. Well, it was good blocking initially, but then it was all Feely at that point in time. By the time he got through that uh, that initial first two or three yards and, and was able to make his way through there, it was all individual effort. Broke a number of tackles, kept his legs churning, kept pumping those thighs, breaking through those attempted arm tackles. You see the initial contact made right there, but now we see one, two, three, four, Five, and finally a six, a fifth and six St. Mike defender it took to get him down on the ground. Final play of the first quarter, barring a penalty, is Wood will drive forward and he'll get in. Touchdown, Thomas A. So it's obvious watching this, you know, this, this drive that the strength of this Thomas A. Stewart uh, offense is clearly their run game, right? And Nathan Thompson is a big part of that. He's featured in that, but, you know, they make it tough. They had a lot of gaps in those box with the double tight ends and then the two fullbacks. St. Mike's got to, you know, be more physical at the point of attack. Defensive coordinators got to get them over on the sideline and say, fellas, listen, this is how we're going to adjust. This is how we're going to set things up based on these formations and where those two fullbacks lead up on in order for them to have a chance to slow this run game down at some point. Lucas Barnett, the extra point, 7-0. Thomas A. leads St. Mike's. We'll be back with the second quarter after this from the 2022 Independent Bowl. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. Welcome back for quarter number two of the 2022 Independent Bowl at Alumni Stadium, University of Guelph. Jack Moore, Dwayne Cameron along with you. They'll reset here as the referee didn't blow the play in, so Lucas Barnett will have to kick this one off again. But we see a touchdown drive by Thomas A. Stewart, capped off with a one-yard quarterback keeper from Colby Wood. And really, Thomas A. Stewart getting it done on the ground offensively on that drive, Dwayne. Yeah, an impressive drive. They, they really grounded out on the ground. We saw where really where the strength of that offense lies, the offensive line, and then formation with those tight ends and fullbacks. Uh, you know, it wasn't too much of a challenge for Thompson. We did see the impressive run right there uh, with Feely right prior to the touchdown where he had the individual effort making five or six carry blues eventually, you know, have to hit him before they're able to get him down on the ground. But... Um, you know, if you're St. Mike's, you got to get over on that sideline and figure out how we're going to stop this running game down or they're just going to keep bringing that train right at you. Start of quarter number two, and Thomas A. Stewart will kick this one away, and it will be Vincenzo D'Amico on the return for St. Mike's. He'll take it across the 40 up to the 42, and that's where their offense will take over, and we'll see Luke Montemuro back onto the field. Yeah, good field position here, and what wind there is is now at your back. So, I mean, you know, your playbook's wide open. You can throw the football, run the football. We Obviously, we saw them come out with drastic differences from a formational standpoint. They came out initially with that tight formation with the tight ends and the fullbacks, and then they went to the spread offense later as the quarterback can, or sorry, as the quarter continued on. So we'll see what they start with here to begin the second quarter. First and 10 from their own 42 for St. Mike's. They're back in those, that tight formation. Max Barrett lines up as the running back. Thomas Highland, the fullback. Gavin Green goes in motion for St. Mike's. Barrett takes the handoff. He'll cut it across the 45 up to the 46. Gain of four, second and six upcoming. Yeah, a lot of traffic. The one thing is, is when you, you know, when you when you go with those tight formations with the extra, you know, the tight ends and the fullbacks, you're bringing a lot of defensive bodies into the box, and there's not a lot of room to run vertically, assuming that the defense is going to be gap sound, and Thomas A. Stewart appears to be pretty gap sound there, so there's not, you know, there's not a lot of running room for the tailback to make his way through there. So they give him the 47, so it'll be second and five. And Montemurro will go under center. I formation for St. Mike's with a double tight end set. Thomas Highland is the fullback. 
And it's play action. Montemuro steps up, and he's met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Great defensive play by Joshua Wheel, and it's third and long for the Cary Blues. Yeah, Thomas A. Stewart there, a lot of penetration. Multiple defenders at the line of scrimmage came through. They were playing pass as opposed to run, so that play action, you'll see the play action fake right here by uh, Montemoro. It had no impact because those defensive linemen were playing upfield. They were rushing upfield. They weren't playing the run whatsoever, so by the time he turns around, he's already got defenders in his face right there. It looks like it was a designed run. He was going the whole way with it, uh, but Thomas A. Stewart defended it well. St. Mike's will have to punt this one away. And this one will bounce right into the hands of Caleb Parkhurst. Breaks a few tackles, gets across the 45, and has a lane on the outside. Parkhurst down inside the 50 before being tracked down. So a big return, and Thomas A. starts just two yards past where St. Mike's punted that football away. Yeah, outstanding field position. Really no gain whatsoever for for St. Mike's off that punt situation right there. One thing of note that I'm seeing here early on is this Thomas A. Stewart team is a more physical football team. We've seen St. Mike's struggle to tackle early in this football game. That punt that punt coverage was another example of that right there where you know we use an example of uh, Devon Johnson for uh, you know for Thomas A. Stewart who's making physical open field one-on-one -on -one tackles. I, I just don't feel right now that St. Mike's is matching the physicality overall of Thomas A. Stewart. Thomas A. Stewart goes in shotgun, or under center, sorry, as they'll hand, up, hand off to Feely, who will drive forward, and he'll keep turning his feet. It's a gain of nine, second and one upcoming. Yeah, good run there, individual referent. We've already seen that once from Feely. You're kind of getting an idea that that's who he is, right? He's a tough inside runner right there. Not the biggest guy, certainly. You see him standing there next to his teammates. Not the biggest runner, but he certainly runs big. You see it right here, inside, off tackle, puts his shoulder pad level down, keeps his balance, runs through contact, puts two arms over the ball. Technically sound runner right there. And there was a flag against Thomas A. Stewart on the play. There's a conversation happening between the referee and the St. Mike's defense. Well, and there's so much traffic in that box there. Like, I didn't, nothing stood out to me initially at the point of attack there as to what this penalty may be related to. I didn't, I didn't see anything specific. Well, I didn't see the flag on the field. So I think they're going to say it's a legal procedure. They're saying they had no end on the line of scrimmage. So what I saw there was the receiver come up on the near side, cover the tight end on the near side, but the left tackle didn't report to the referee. Oh, okay. So it seems like it's a complex system. A lot of moving parts there. So we'll have first and 15, no end against Thomas A. Stewart. And still in Cary Blues territory at their 51. After a big punt return from Caleb Parkhurst. This time, they will line up in shotgun. Wouldn't shock to be shocked to see play action out of this right here. Fake to Amos. Thompson gets the pitch down low. He's got room to work, and he bounces it outside. Nathan Thompson wins the foot race. Touchdown, it's Thomas A. Wow, impressive run. It wasn't play action, but it was misdirection, right? They had everything going front side to the wide side of the field and then brought Thompson back across the formation from that tight wing. You'll see it here, the fake to the field, the, the kind of the shovel back towards the boundary, and then it's all Thompson the whole way. Makes the defender miss, doesn't even get a hand on him in that open field tackle attempt. And down the sideline, you see the size, you see the speed. He's able to carry it out all the way to the end zone. So Thomas A goes 51 yards, and Nathan Thompson gets them back in the end zone. And the extra point, no good. It was blocked at the line of scrimmage, so Lucas Barnett cannot convert on the extra point, and it's 13-0. Well, and Jack, I don't know at this point in time, you know, what kind of, uh, how many eyes have been on. Uh, Nathan Thompson, from a recruiting standpoint to this point, I have no idea how many schools are talking to him or how far along in that process he is at this point in time. But I can assure you after the first first quarter and a little bit of this game today, he's going to be busy post-game having conversations with many university scouts and coaches here. Yeah, down in the uh, end zone to our left, they block off an area for the coaches who will have conversations with players that they want to identify, some players they've already talked to. But 
players that they've identified throughout the course of the game that they want to have conversations with that they might not have had conversations with. And Nathan Thompson definitely putting his name in the mix to have some conversations here. Number of schools in attendance. We mentioned yesterday pretty much every school in the country will be represented here in recruiting is Gavin Green with a big return for St. Mike's. Green breaks a tackle, and he won't be caught on his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Kerry Blues. Oh, man, what a fantastic play, and some real burst there you saw from Green. Once he stuck his foot in the ground and went vertical, you saw a significant acceleration, and he was able to take off. We talked earlier about the physicality, and specifically, Devon Johnson's made a couple big plays already, and he had a chance to make one right there and he overruns it he misses the tackle and now green begins to weave his way through that traffic right the tackling breaks down for thomas a stewart the lane integrity breaks down and greens off to the races and got his team back in this football game so st mike's gets a response seven point game pending the extra point and quite frankly, they needed that. They needed a, They needed something. They needed a spark. They needed something that didn't include a quarterback center exchange. Marco DeLuca for the extra point is good. So it's a six-point game. And obviously, you know, we mentioned it yesterday, small plays. But through the course of this game, depending on how the rest of it plays out, that extra point from Thomas A not being good can play a big difference. Yeah, big difference. And we also talked yesterday about how much special teams impacts Canadian football, right? And you see it right there. Um, you know, oftentimes you'll see at, at this level, you'll see uh, special teams take a back seat. You know what I mean? We focus on, they focus on offense in practice. They focus on defense in practice, you know, and, and some, some schools, unfortunately, just kind of, you know, they just kind of go through the motions from special teams and pro from a practice and preparation standpoint. I'm certainly in no way, in shape or form, I'm suggesting that's what took place there with Thomas A. Stewart. Um, but I guess what I'm getting at is you just understand how important that aspect of the game is. St. Mike's is down two scores. They got to get something going, and they do it in the kicking game um, with a big return touchdown. It wasn't until I got to university that I didn't have special teams at the very end of practice. That yeah. was always in, in high school football, minor football. It was always just at the end of practice, and you see it break down over the course, and it changes the momentum of games. Yeah, the kicking game is just so much a part of the Canadian football with three downs, right? You've, it's something you've got to emphasize and you've got to focus on. So Marco DeLuca with the wind at his back will boot this one away. And Thomas A. Stewart will return it from their own 25. Miles Saligo, nowhere to go with it, cuts it up field and will be taken down at the 37. So a return of 12. And after an explosive play by Nathan Thompson the last time on offense, Thomas A. Stewart's offense is back on the field. Yeah, and if you're St. Mike's, obviously you got the explosive play there. Green takes it back to the touchdown, gets you back into this football game, changes the momentum swing back to your side right now. But what are you going to do defensively here to stop what was, you know, was a, was a snowball rolling downhill at you in the first quarter, this run game that you couldn't get any, you couldn't make any stops on. It's fantastic that you've made it a one-score game now, but – you're going to have to stop this offense if you want to hang in there. So Thomas A. will scrimmage from their own 38, first and 10. Colby Wood under center. He'll hand it off to Feely. Gets across the 45, and he'll be taken down after a gain of seven, second and three. Yeah, St. Mike's playing with five guys down on the line of scrimmage, right? They're playing with the five guys down on the line of scrimmage, and then they're trying to move and adjust with those fullbacks uh, with the second-level players right there. And it's anchored in the middle. Quishon Williams, who also doubles as their center. Big number 97 for the Cary Blues. Lines up on the nose of Teo Anchor. So they're going five down again, three linebackers, and you got a weak side overhang player here across from Thompson. Second and three. Colby Wood will keep it himself. He has the first down and will be taken down about two yards short of the midfield, but it moves the sticks for the Griffins. Yeah, there's just no firmness to this short side edge right here, and if we see the replay, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out right here. Um, you know, initially you see 11 there, Thompson. You see 42 lined up across from him, but they have no defensive end outside of this tight end. You see the tight end right there. So the defensive lineman is inside. Thompson just turns 42 outside, and then there's no other defenders there. It's an easy pickup for a first down and will be all day unless they adjust to these formations. 
So they'll go double tight, first and 10 from their own 53. Colby Wood in shotgun. He has a rushing touchdown in this one. And Wood will drop back to pass. He's looking left and downfield. And that one is caught by Parkhurst. Caleb Parkhurst down to the 20. What an adjustment and catch from Caleb Parkhurst. And it's a first down, Thomas A. from the St. Mike's 20-yard line. Yeah, I believe the defensive back over there was number 23, Lucas Kovar. And I felt great the whole time. I thought he was in excellent position. He did a great job here. He isn't really beat as much as Caleb Parkhurst just goes up and makes a play on the football. You see the defensive back, uh, Jack, is there. He's in very good position. But uh, Parkhurst is just able to adjust to the football and he does an excellent job of high-pointing it going up and getting it at its highest point, using the height advantage that he has to come down with it. First and 10 from the 20 for Thomas A. And Colby Wood will keep it himself, breaks a tackle, but this time gets away again and will drive himself down to the 11-yard line. So it looked like getting him down was Lucas Corvar, but he broke away from that tackle. He'll gain eight, second and two. Well, to me, it's been one of the stories of this game I mentioned a few minutes ago is the tackling of St. Mike's has not been up to par. They have not matched the physicality uh, of this Thomas A. Stewart um, offense. And we've seen, you know, whether it's the quarterback there, Colby Wood, whether it's Feely, they're, they're all breaking tackles. Thompson breaking tackles. Uh, St. Mike's not matching the physicality at this point in time of that Stewart offense. It's finally Kyle Johnson and Nicholas Kunde Lenny taking him down as Colby Wood lines up under center. Second and short here for Thomas A. And I'll hand this one off to Thompson. Cuts it up the middle, and we'll walk in for a Thomas A. Griffin's touchdown. I mean, that was that was pretty easy. There wasn't a lot of resistance right there. I'm not sure Thompson was touched on that run. So, um, you know, the theme hasn't changed. And, you know, I don't want to keep talking about the same things over and over, but we keep seeing the same things over and over. Uh, from a formational standpoint here is, you know, we're not, uh, we're not getting the gap matching that's necessary. Um, and so you end up in a scenario, whether they run to the boundary, whether they run to the field, you have more offensive blockers than you have defenders there to account for those blockers. And so it's, you know, it's kind of free wheel right there for the running back. Barnett's extra point is good. There is a flag on the near side of the field. Both teams running off the field. It was offside against the Cary Blues, so that'll be applied on the kickoff. So Thomas A. will kick off from their own 50 instead of the 45. Yeah, and I'm biased. Uh, obviously, being a defensive coach, you know, you hear the term sometimes, well, defense win championships. And, I mean, that's, that's not necessarily true. You have to have a balanced team to have success. But the thing that you need to do is you've got to have a team that can have defensive success so that it doesn't turn into a track meet. You're not playing basketball where you're just exchanging baskets back and forth from end to end to end to end. Um, you've got to be able to make stops. And to this point in time, you know, St. Mike's hasn't been able to make any stops. And so now that puts a lot of pressure on their special teams to be perfect. It places a lot of pressure on their offense to try and be perfect. And rarely are you ever going to be perfect uh, in those aspects of the game. So defensively, they got to get some things figured out quickly here. Gavin Green, who had the return for a touchdown after taking the lateral from Vincenzo D'Amico. 5-11 to go in the first half. 20-7, Thomas A. Stewart leads St. Mike's College. And D'Amico will take it. He'll fake it this time to Green and keep it himself. And D'Amico will be chopped down just shy of the 25-yard line where the Cary Blues offense will come back on the field. Thomas A scored two offensive touchdowns since the last time the Cary Blues offense was on the field. The Cary Blues had that return for a touchdown. Yeah, they've been sitting on the sideline for a little while. Um, you know, So hopefully they've got a plan out here. First thing that they got to get figured out is this quarterback center exchange because they've had some struggles just getting the football back to the quarterback uh, in a competent manner. So they got to get that figured out before you even start thinking about how you're going to move the ball down the field. First and 10 from their own 24 for St. Mike's. Looking for a response after Thomas A. goes down the field and Nathan Thompson scores his second touchdown of the game. Luke Montemurro under center. Max Barrett, the running back. And the handoff is to Barrett. Barrett gets to the 25, but not much farther. So a second and long coming up here. Good tackling on the defense by Thomas A. Yeah, I think it was uh, Trent Staud, the Mike linebacker, was able to knife through there, kind of came through, read the play, let the initial uh, defensive lineman work through in their gaps and read off of them right there. It was an excellent open field tackle. 
You'll see him come from just out of your screen on the left side here on the snap. See him sneak right through in there in the A gap, and I believe it's actually 46 Riley Keenan. My apologies for that. Um, but that's an excellent open field one-on-one -on -one tackle by Keenan. Second and long here for the Cary Blues, and they go in shotgun. Down by 13, under four minutes to go in the first half. Montemurro fires, and that one is complete for a first down for the Cary Blues. Gabriel Faria making yeah, the tackle, Thomas, or making the catch. Yeah, Thomas A. Stewart just playing a little bit of a soft zone there in second down and long. St. Mike's coming out and just running a, an easy all-hitch concept. All four receivers just ran five yards, stopped and turned around, and he was able to make his target. They got the quarterback center exchange off. Positive things happening. Hopefully this is the beginning of them being able to get, you know, get some things going on the offensive side. So Montemurro will have a first and ten from his own 37-yard line, 38-yard line. Barrett the running back for the Kerry Blues. Thomas Highland the fullback. Double tight under center eye formation for St. Mike's. And they'll go to Gavin Green on the end around, but he gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Joshua Wheel getting home again. Yeah, the challenge with that play is that you're running it back into the short side of the field, Jack. They're running it back into the boundary, and so there's not as much room there. And the other thing is he's coming from so far away. Take a look at how long this play takes to develop. Right, and that what that means is the defenders have time to realize, okay, the initial run look was a fake. They see the other receiver coming around on the reverse look right there, and so they got time to be able to react and adjust. It just it just takes way too much time for that to develop. Loss of three, second and 13 as we hit the three-minute warning of the first half. Second and long again here for the Kerry Blues on this drive. And Montemurro will drop back. Rolls off to his left, has some space. Defense closing in, he fires downfield, and it's caught. Gain of 15 and a first down for the Cary Blues. Owen Doig making the catch. Well, initially they had uh, Logan Wilson wide open to the field here. The quarterback didn't see him or at least chose not to throw it. And I think the cornerback in that situation assumed the quarterback was going to run. He left his coverage too early, and that allowed 88 to sneak out. Owen Doig, he snuck out in behind on the scramble by the quarterback right there. Those are what we refer to as scramble rules. If you're a defensive back, you're not responsible for keeping the quarterback in the pocket. you got to stay in coverage till he crosses the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from their own 50, and this one is caught. And breaking a tackle and a gain of 14, the ball comes loose, but they'll mark him down. Logan Wilson making the catch for the Kerry Blues and moving the sticks again. Yeah, you see the high snap there again, the quarterback's having to deal with, and then it's a high throw, so good job right there by Wilson coming down with it. He definitely was down before the ball came out. Devon Johnson, after starting out the game with two really physical open field tackles, that's now the second open field tackle he's missed right there. If he can secure that tackle and limit the gain on the initial catch, but they were able to pick up the extra yardage off the missed tackle. So the Kerry Blues having some success throwing the ball on this drive. Montemurro goes under center. He'll hand this one off. Highland, the fullback, drives forward to the 40. A gain of six will bring up second and four. Yeah, and that's a big running back, Highland, coming right through there. You're not going to have to want to spend a lot of time today tackling him. They come out in that... Uh, 22 under center with the uh, with the split backs right there. Pick up a nice five, six-yard gain on first down. Put it into second and manageable situations here. Second and four, and they're marching their way down the field. I like what I'm seeing on this drive, both out of the play calling and the execution right here by quarterback Montemoro. Second and four with a minute 45 to go. Handoff and taken down at the line of scrimmage. Once again, Riley Keenan making the tackle. Max Barrett on the carry. So a third and three coming up for the Kerry Blues. Yeah, that's not the first time we've seen Keenan make plays. He's an excellent linebacker here between the tackles. Excellent box linebacker, reads his keys, sees that it's a run look from the offensive line, and plays downhill and limits the gain. They're going to go for it here, and I, I agree with this call. You haven't done anything yet at this point in time to be able to slow this Thomas A. Stewart down. You need touchdowns at this point if you're going to stay in this game if you're St. Mike's. So I agree with this call to go for it on third down. Third and three here. As St. Mike's moves early, so that'll be flags on the play, and this will bring them back five yards, a third and eight coming up. Yeah, yeah. now you just really shot yourself in the foot here. You go third and three, right? Your playbook's kind of wide open. If this is, in fact, on St. Mike's and it's third and eight, now you obviously you need a little bit more um, you know, downfield concepts in terms of what you're going to run from a passing game standpoint. You just... 
you know, you are already got your back against the wall here down by two scores. You can't afford to have any kind of mental errors like they just, like they just did. So third and eight coming up here for St. Mike's. Late in this first half. And Montemurro will go in shotgun. He has Gavin Green as the receiver to the top of your screen. Montemurro scrambles to his right. He'll try and take it himself, and he'll be taken down after only a gain of two. So this Thomas A. Stewart defense able to force the turnover on downs and get the football back. Right. With 81 seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, and that's the challenge there when you lose those five yards, right? I mean, now it's third and eight. If it's third and three, maybe he picks up the first down on the scramble right there, but on the third and eight, uh, those defenders, they just close down too quick, and he's not able to get the first down. Disappointing because that drive, it's the best execution they've had, really the only execution they've had uh, offensively here in the first half. So I was hoping to see them be able to get something out of this uh, right before halftime. And the quick movement on third and three proves costly. Even if you run that same play, you're short of the sticks, but things could have worked out differently for the Kerry Blues had they have not taken that five-yard penalty as this handoff will go to Thompson. Cuts up the middle, he'll drive his feet forward. A gain of about five will bring up second and five, and a late flag flies on the play. Yeah, interesting, uh, you know, staying with the run game inside there, not worried about the clock with 115. You doubt a two-score lead, so if you're a Thomas A. Stewart, you're not really feeling a ton of pressure right now that we got to get this football in the end zone. Of course, you're trying to, but you're, you're willing to be a little bit more patient in terms of your play calling here. Uh, that was, that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. So I assume it was on the tackle attempt right there uh, by St. Mike's. And they just, man, they just, they keep making mistakes here, Jack, and, and putting themselves in difficult positions. You can't give this Thomas A. Stewart offense any additional help. They're already executing at an extremely high level. So the ball's now in their end of the field. St. Mike's defense coordinator's got to come up with some kind of play call to get a stop and not let this Stewart offense continue to roll downhill. First and 10 from the 48 for Thomas A. Stewart. 13-point lead with a minute 15 to go in the first half. And they'll hand it off to Barnett up the middle, and he'll drive himself forward. A nice physical run will gain eight, second and two coming up for the Griffins. Yeah, the ball came out there at the end, but I, you know, they've clearly ruled him down right there. Um, you know, we're coming down close to a minute here. Of course, in the last three minutes, the clock is going to stop. They're staying with that inside run game. St. Mike's interesting enough playing a 30 front. At least on that play they did. They went three down linemen and then played with five linebackers off the line of scrimmage just to, uh, you know, to try and give that uh, Stewart offense a di offensive line a different look in the front. So second and three after the gain of seven, they mark it. And Thomas A. Stewart will go in shotgun here. Double tight end set for the Griffins. I think they're going to throw the ball here. Play action to Amos. Now a fire downfield for Thompson. Makes the catch and walks in for a touchdown. Yeah, as I just said, just based on the formation and where Thompson was aligning in the slot, he was away from the tackle. He was out in space more like a true slot back. And, and so my mind, I just thought, you know what? That's the guy they're going to go to. They're going to throw the football here. They do it off a of play action. And, of course, that sucks that uh, defensive front from St. Mike's up. The coverage is not able to stay over the top. The one thing you can't do is if, you're, if the Cary Blue secondary at this point in time, you cannot allow anyone to get behind you. It's the end of a half situation. you got to keep the offense in front of you. You can't let those receivers get behind you. Unfortunately, they weren't able to execute. A little bit of confusion from Thomas A. Stewart. So they take a timeout on the point after attempt. Their first timeout of this first half. Well, and we've seen here in the first half exactly why the coaches said that Nate Thompson and Caleb Wood were the guys on their offensive side of the football to watch. Uh, Wood's done a good job here throwing the football. We've seen him now complete two vertical footballs down the field. Uh, obviously, we saw Parkhurst come down with the first one and Thompson come down with that one. And then we've seen, obviously, Thompson really, really take advantage of this Kerry Blues front in the running game. So there's, there's a reason, obviously, why he put those as his two best players. Now, as a, a friend of the quarterback, I would say I'm, I'm going to give Colby Wood two touchdown passes because that Thompson run was actually a, a pitch forward 
And the reason you run that is because if it falls to the ground, it's an incomplete pass. No, you're absolutely right. True. From a technical standpoint, I hate the fact that those get counted as, <laughs> as passes because there's no way as a defense to stop it. So. When you're the defensive backs coach of the Calgary Stampeders and those plays break off as the extra point is good, 27-7 to lead, that isn't good on your resume yeah. when those ones go for big plays. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, you get to an end of a game and you look at the quarterback completion percentage, you're like, okay, he was 78% today, and you're like, okay, two tailback screens, two wide receiver hitch screens, a shovel pass. I mean, you can't – like, they're going to complete those. You can't stop them. I mean, they're going to they're gonna make it 100 out of 100 times just because it's behind the line of scrimmage, right? But uh, it is factored as a forward pass. So, technically, you're right. Wood, Wood, Woods has two touchdown passes right Both now. to Nathan Thompson and then Thompson running one in and Colby Wood with a rushing touchdown as well. Hey, I mean, that, that also goes – he can put that when he when – he, Posts about this game at the end of the game. Hey, I threw for a touchdown in the first half. I ran for a touchdown in the first half. And that's what you can sell for Colby Wood, who's had a, a really good balanced quarterback play. Really can, good first half of football. And Nathan Thompson getting it done for this Thomas A. Stewart team as well. As that ball hits the turf, the Cary Blue is able to pick it up. And D'Amico will be taken down at his own 36-yard line. Yeah, 38 seconds to go, so you really, you know, if you have any intention of trying to score here, if you're not just going to run out the clock here, uh, obviously you're going to have to go drop back pass game. You know, if I'm Thomas A. Stewart, I'm not worried about the running game. I'm not focused on play action. I don't care. We're going to play with – we're going to play short in the box, multiple defenders deep, maybe play a quarters coverage or a man – off soft man coverage with free safety help in the middle of the field. The only thing that you can't do if you're Thomas A. Stewart is what we just saw happen to St. Mike's. You cannot allow the receivers to get deep behind you. So first and 10 from their own 36. And like you mentioned, 38 seconds to go in the first half. 27-7 lead for Thomas A. Stewart over the St. Mike's Carey Blues. Montemurro lines up in shotgun. And he'll send his receivers in motion, drop back to pass. Fire off to his right, and that is complete to Gavin Green. He'll gain six yards, second and four. And yeah, we see Thompson showing up, flashing on defense there, coming from that inside safety position. They're playing a cover three shell, so both halfbacks are playing high to their side of the field. St. Mike's came out in a 23 formation. Two receivers to the field, three receivers to the boundary on that last play. Seemed to be some miscommunication here in terms of their, on this play right here, in terms of their personnel. And it will be a screen to Barrett, but it falls down to the turf incomplete. Thomas A. might have got a hand on it. But that'll bring up third and three here for the Cary Blues. And with the clock not running until the ball is snapped, this is a, a, a weird situation. You don't want to give Thomas A. Stewart the ball back with a chance to score at the end of the first half. No, I mean, you got to kick this away. you you got to kick this away. I mean, if, if you don't get this first down, they're already in your – you know, they're already in, in scoring position on your end of the field. So I understand earlier why you went for it on third down. I'm not sure this is the situation right now to do it, but hopefully they get it. Montemurro fires it off. Gavin Green can't make the catch. And Thomas A. Stewart will take over on downs with 18.9 seconds to go yeah. in the first half on the Kerry Blues 43-yard line. Well, and that's your worst-case scenario, right? You go quick game pass. It's a quick hitch out to Green in the in the, uh, in the the weak side flat right there. To, to, to be quite frank and honest, I mean, it's a good pass by Montemurro. It was a little bit high, but Green's got to make that catch. But right now, you know what I mean? If you're Thomas Stewart, you're on the 43-yard line. One more first down, you're already in field goal range. There's not a ton of wind out here right now. Uh, but look for them to take a take a shot to the end zone. We know we got two guys that can go up and get it down the field in Parkhurst and Thompson. They're lining them up both to the same side here in the boundary. And, and that's short side of the field for, for Wood if he wants to go that and way. And they're playing with a tight end on that side, so both of those guys get the waggle off the football. Colby Wood drops back to pass. He'll look off to his left and fire it downfield for Parkhurst. Knocked down, and that will be pass interference against the Kerry Blues down on the 10. So the ball will be spotted at the, about the 28-yard line. Yeah, I, I don't think there was any uh, malintent there. I think they literally just got their feet. We'll have to see here on the replay if we get a chance to. Um, but I think the defensive back, and you see here, and I talked about both receivers off the line of scrimmage so that they get the run up. It's easier to run a vertical route that way in that situation. But I literally think their feet just got tangled up. There, there was no interference in terms of intentional contact by the defensive back, but they're always going to call that if the receiver falls. So first and 10 from the 28. Again, we talked about this yesterday. Opposite to the CFL, if the 
pass interference is outside of 15 yards, it's a 15-yard penalty. If it's inside of 15 yards, it's a spot foul. I think they got one chance to go to the end zone here, Jack, and outside of that, they, you know, they gotta, they're got they going to have to kick the field Thompson goal. Thompson will throw it to Parkhurst, and he can't make the catch in the end zone. Defensive play, good job there by the Cary Blues defense, Christian Coley. Yeah, excellent play by Coley, and he's coming up limping there a little bit. I'm not sure if a knee or ankle, but he's, he's certainly limping right there. Excellent play on the football. He's able to get his hand up, deflect the ball without making any contact. Um, on the receiver there, Parkhurst not drawing the flag. Impressive throw right there also by Thompson. Is there anything this young man doesn't do for this football team? Well, I was just thinking about that scene from Friday Night Lights. And he can pass. Yeah. He'll line up as the tight end to the left of Colby Wood, who will look to the end zone. And this one falls incomplete. 0.7 seconds to go in third down. So Thomas A will get one more crack at the end zone here as they were looking for Miles Saligo. Yeah, they're bringing in the puck for the field goal, which I'm surprised. I thought they may just go ahead and throw one up to Parkhurst and or, or Thompson once again. St. Mary's very fortunate because, as you see there, the receiver's in behind. It appears to be number 20, Miles Saligo, excuse me, got in behind the corner, but the ball was thrown too far inside for him to be able to make the play. Wind in his face, and the Kerry Blues will take a timeout here as – Lucas Barnett will come on to attempt the 35-yard field goal, but that ball just hanging up in that wind. A little bit of wind, not as much as we saw yesterday, but still making it seem like there was an impact on the play. Yeah, and it's blowing more than it was uh, when the game first started right now, so we'll see. Uh, I mean, is anyone other than Thompson going to kick this ball? I mean, I assume he's got to be your field goal <laughs> kicker too, right? He's clearly your backup quarterback, receiver, running back, makes plays on defense. We may as well have Thompson kick too, but... Um, you know, this, this decision to go for it for, for St. Mike's here on third down uh, that they didn't get ultimately may not cost them as much as it could have um, with Thomas A. Stewart's inability to capitalize on a couple of those deep passes down the field here in the last minute. So it'll be a 35-yard field goal attempt, and it won't be Nathan Thompson. And it'll be Lucas Barnett to attempt. As of right now, we don't know if he's going to shift out of the formation and, and motion in to kick it. He will line up as the tight end to the right of the long snapper. Gavin Green will go back deep to return for the Cary Blues. 0.7 seconds to go in the first half. A 27-7 lead for Thomas A. Stewart. Barnett's field goal is up. Off the crossbar! Oh! About two inches short. Off the crossbar and out for Lucas Barnett. So no points on that play, but Thomas Lee Stewart can feel pretty good about that half of football. Well, and that's maybe where that little bit of wind that is there right now is, is the difference uh, between that just getting over top of the bar and, and hitting the crossbar. The execution in terms of the snap to hold uh, was good, got the kick off, but just a little bit short. 27-7, to Thomas A. Stewart leads St. Mike's College into the halftime. We'll be back in about 15 minutes for the second half of the 2022 Independent Bowl from Alumni Stadium in Guelph. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching, and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball, it's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. 
It's how you earn your greatest victories. How you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things from my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach. Train for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity, and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships we formed. The character we built, that's what I remember. My team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I do. That's why I coach. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball. It's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories. How you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. Hey, 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 hey. 
I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things from my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach. Train for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity, and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. My team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball. It's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories. How you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things from my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach.
Train for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity, and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. My team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I do. That's why I coach. Welcome back for the second half of the 2022 Independent Bowl between the Thomas A. Stewart Griffins and the St. Mike College Cary Blues. It's a 27-7 lead for Thomas A. Stewart, and really that first half, Dwayne, was a Nathan Thompson show. Yeah, Nathan Thompson, Colby Wood, Caleb Parkhurst, I mean, Jordan Feely. We saw a number of guys get involved in there, but the I mean, the main storyline is St. Michael's inability to stop really anything that Thomas Stewart has tried to do or wanted to do on the offensive side of the football. 
They go in at halftime. We'll see what they're able to do, you know, from an adjustment standpoint, talking to their players from a scheme and system standpoint to slow this offense down. We did see the St. Mike's offense kind of perk up a little bit there towards the end of the first half. They weren't able to capitalize. Obviously, they went for it on third down in that one situation, didn't get it. Um, so they're going to have to score some points here in the second half to get back in this game. But the first thing, find a way to stop Thomas Stewart from getting to the end zone. And Thomas A. will get the ball to start the second half. So they weren't able to convert with points at the end of the first half. They had a couple end zone shots, and then they brought out the field goal unit to attempt a 35-yarder that hit the crossbar. So even that 20-point differential could be more after Thomas A. took over with about 20 seconds left in that first half on a third down attempt as Kerry Blues will try a squib kick and it's recovered by Thomas A. Stewart. Flags fly and we'll see what the call is here, but a great heads up play by Trent Stodd yeah. to run up and get that football. Absolutely, heads up play for sure. Go ahead and attack it before it gets to the point that the St. Mike's players are allowed to touch it. The really impressive thing is you see all those white jerseys running at that young man, right? And he went forward. He went into the abyss. He went into the darkness and uh, attacked that football. Great job by Stodd there being aggressive. It's offside against the Cary Blues and false start against St. Thomas – or, sorry, Thomas A. Uh, so I, we'll I, have a re-kick. I didn't really teams. understand the illegal procedure call against Thomas A. Stewart unless he lined up offside, which I didn't see. What is – what is – what is a false start on a kickoff return unit? What's a procedure call on a, on a kickoff return unit? I'm not sure I've seen that before. So they're getting the explanation from the referee. Okay. It looks like he's... All right. See, now, that makes sense to me. Okay, so the both penalties were on uh, St. Mike's in that situation. I, I mean, I've been a special teams coordinator. I don't profess to know everything. Far from it. But I was like, I'm not sure what a legal procedure on a kickoff return unit would look like. I don't know what you would have to do to warrant that call. So it'll be first and 10 from the St. Mike's 51. So that's the negative of trying the onside kick if the other team recovers. Yeah, they're playing on a short field now. And we've seen this offense score they're pretty running. much at will. They're running the football. They're under center, double tight, and they'll hand it off to Nathan Thompson, who bounces it outside and will drive forward down to the 41. He should have enough for a first down, and he does. Yeah, and you can come out and run the football when you can run it as effectively as they did in the first half and have started here again in the second half. Multiple players. Now we got one guy outside of the box, Caleb Parkhurst. He's the wide receiver to the wide side of the field out of your picture at the bottom of the screen. They got double tight end formation here. Two fullbacks leading up on the weak side. And again, Thompson goes through five, six yards before any guy in a white jersey is even able to put a hand on him. And they'll line up in this double tight, two fullback formation again under center for Colby Wood. Two passing touchdowns in that first half as Feely motions out into the slot and they'll toss it to Thompson. Thompson bounces it outside, breaks a tackle, gets down to the 30. He should have enough for a first down again as he's marked out at the 31. He'll actually be... About half a yard short, so second and short coming up here. Yeah, you see the slot back right here at the top of the screen. Feely, he's going to come downhill. He's going to block down inside, right? And when he's able to block down inside, St. Mike's loses their edge. They don't have an edge defender at that point in time. It's an easy nine-yard pickup for Thompson. So second and one coming up here for St. Mike, or sorry, Thomas A. from the St. Mike's 31. And Thomas A. will line up double tight under center again. Thompson is the running back. And the handoff is to Thompson. Has room on the outside. Thompson breaks a tackle inside the 10 down to the 5. Yeah, I mean, a couple guys had an opportunity, Adam. They weren't, you know, body-on-body -body opportunities. They were arm tackle opportunities. As we've seen with Thompson, he's a size-speed guy. So, you know, he's got – he's obviously he's bigger than most of the guys trying to tackle him, and he's definitely faster than most of the guys trying to tackle him. So their arm tackle attempts, 42 is too far up the field. We see the diving attempt there by 74. Even 18 tries to get a hand on him right there. Nathan Nauman tries to bring him down, is unable to, and then it takes three or four more defenders to finish it off before he gets to the end zone. Injured Kerry Blue on the field. Nicholas Kunde Lenny. Cool. 
middle linebacker for this Cary Blues defense. He tended to by the trainers as Thomas A. will have a first and goal from the six. Yeah, I don't think it's anything too serious right here. Obviously, he's just on one knee. He's not, uh, he's not down on the ground, so I don't appear to be anything lower body-wise right here. Hopefully, he's able to come back and keep playing. Um, finish this game off for his, you know, for his teammates here. But, I mean, you know, come out second half, no idea what, uh, obviously, the conversations were like in the locker room for St. Mike's, but whatever it was, whatever they've tried to do differently here early in this third quarter here as we've, you know, we're just a couple minutes in, uh, it hasn't worked yet uh, because Thomas A. Stewart continues to just run downhill and it doesn't matter who they hand the football off to. I know it's Thompson here, but we've seen throughout this game, it doesn't matter who the back is in the backfield right there. What they're doing offensively from a system and formational standpoint, uh, St. Mike's does not have an answer for at this point. Kunde Linney is walking off the field with a limp. So Thomas A. Stewart will have first and goal from the six-yard line when they restart here. Just a minute, 46 seconds into this second half, 27 to seven, Thomas A. Stewart leads, and they're knocking on the door of extending that lead even further. Well, we saw at the end of the first half, right? St. Mike's went for it on third down. Uh, they didn't get it. They gave uh, Thomas A. Stewart the short field. It didn't really hurt him because they missed the field goal, but they gave him another short field here to start the second half. This time, it doesn't look like it's going to work out as well for St. St. Mike's. Nathan Thompson will. Find the end zone, touchdown, Thomas A. Stewart. Another touchdown for Nathan Thompson in this, uh, in this independent bowl. And two minutes, five seconds into the second half, Thomas A. Stewart's back on the board. Yeah, it's, it's just a, you know, it's a carbon copy of what we've seen all along, right? A tight end and the offensive tackle block down. The fullbacks lead up on the edge. There, aren't any, there really isn't anyone there for them to block half the time. Um, and so it's an easy walk-in for Thompson. I just think when you've got an offense that's operating at the level that uh, Thomas A. Stewart are, if you're St. Mike's, you can't really risk giving them short fields. You've got to make them go 70, 80, 90 yards. Uh, the decision to go ahead with the surprise onside kicker to start the second half clearly didn't surprise Thomas A. Stewart. Their coaches had their guys ready for it, and uh, Stott obviously jumped on the football right there. But uh, when, they're, when they're doing what they're doing offensively, you don't have an answer for it. You at least got to make them go – you know, you got to make them go a full field to score. You can't give them short fields. Lucas Barnett, the extra point was good. So 34-7 to is the score as Thomas A. Stewart pulling away even further from St. Michael's College. You know, and if you're St. Mike's, we just got to, you know, we got to hope here in the second half we're able to see Montemurro uh, get something going offensively. As I said, their offense was trending up. Uh, it was ticking upwards late. Uh, they weren't able to capitalize on the scoreboard for it, but we saw them complete some passes, make some plays, get first downs, move the chains, start to flip the field a little bit, um, and hopefully they're able to, to build off that here early in the second half. This one booted away, and it will go to D'Amico, who will toss it off to Gavin Green, who picks it up, and he'll be met by some Thomas A. defenders and taken down behind his own 20-yard line. So that was the play that resulted in the St. Mike's touchdown in the first half, but it loses them yards on the return in the second half. Yeah, I mean, it worked one time, right? It worked one time, and now you each time you're on a kickoff return, you keep going back to it over and over and over again. I mean, the special teams coordinator for Samus A. Stewart has said, guys, make sure we stay in our lane integrity. It doesn't matter whether they run the reverse, fake the reverse. If you're field side, make sure you stay Discipline in your lanes. If you're boundary side, make sure you stay disciplined in your lanes. At this point in time, St. Mike's just needs to take the ball and run upfield forward with it. Brody Roberts making the special teams tackle there. And St. Mike's will have first and 10 from their own 20-yard line as Montemurro on the field for the first time in this second half. Montemurro will hand this one off. Gavin Green going on the outside. Cuts it back to his own five. Breaks a tackle. And will get up to the 10. But a loss of nine on the play as he gets marked down at the 11. We saw a team play yesterday whose primary offense was misdirection-based in St. Pat's. And we talked during that broadcast about how crisp the timing and execution of those misdirection plays were. The timing on these St. Mike's di di <laughs> misdirection plays today is painfully slow, right? And so the defense can see it coming. They've got time to see it coming and react to it. You're not going to catch them off guard. Those... 
those misdirection plays have to happen right now quickly, and they're just they're just happening at too slow a pace Daniel. to have an impact. Daniel Amos almost making the tackle back at the five, but Green getting up to the 11. So a loss of nine brings up second and 19. Montemurro back to pass. Screen pass goes off to Max Barrett, and he gets taken down. That is, again, Riley Keenan making the tackle. We've seen him make tackles inside the box, now getting out to the wide side and negating that screen pass from going anywhere, third and 15. Yeah, I really like Keenan. Um, you know, we've seen him make three or four plays kind of like this in and around the box and in the, sh in the short pass game area right here. They did have the successful green, uh, screen, uh, tailback screen to start the game. They've tried it a couple times since. It hasn't worked. Uh, I think Keenan is on to it. He knows the picture that he's looking at as that play develops. And so, you know, they're going to have to come – they're going to have to go with something else because they keep trying to run that in second and long. And so, of course, Keenan's keying on it at this point in time. They're going to have to come up with something built off of that. High snap, but it's corralled by DeLuca. Takes a while, but finally gets a nice high punt, and Parkhurst takes it at his own 45. He'll flip this one off to Miles Saligo. Has the edge. Miles Saligo gets a block. Miles Saligo down the sideline, and he steps out of bounds at the 16. Well, great execution on the reverse right there. Uh, the punter, obviously, he held on to that ball to allow his cover team time to get down the field, right? And they're still not really down there far enough. You catch it clean. You see there's no immediate you know, threat. There's nobody within seven or eight yards right there. An excellent decision right here by Thompson to not run a crackback block. That would have brought this return back because that would have been an illegal penalty working back down the field. Uh, towards the returner so heads up play right there by Thompson just another indicator of you know this guy not only is he a talented athlete but he's a smart intelligent football player who uses his head in terms of his decision making process as if you needed more evidence on how much you like this kid yeah I yeah absolutely I think he's a fantastic player best one I've seen so far in this game Colby Wood will fire it out to the far side for Parkhurst and he will step out at the 12, so that's a gain of six. We'll bring up second and four. Well, we've seen them to this point in time throw the ball vertically down the field. So they go with the little wide receiver hitch screen on the inside. You see uh, you see Thompson and the uh, the other running back there, Jordan Feely, be the lead blockers out there on the edge. They're able to pick up. Feely's not able to really totally make the block right there. Vincenzo D'Amico is able to come off and make the tackle limit the gain. So second and four for Thomas A. Stewart from the St. Mike's 12-yard line. Feely the deep back, double tight, two fullback formation. And they will go to Feely. Has an open lane and will drive into the end zone. Touchdown, Thomas A. Stewart. I mean, they're putting on a clinic right now, Jack. It doesn't matter. They're putting on a clinic. You, you run it left, you run it right, you throw it deep, you throw it short, right? Every, every call... Uh, is working when you're looking when you're the offensive coordinator and you're looking down at your play call sheet it doesn't really matter what you pick because everything's everything you touch is turning to gold right now you had two fullbacks leading the way there and Nathan Thompson walks through the hole and there was nobody there to block they blocked it up perfectly up front and Feely made some contact down at the one 11 yards past the line of scrimmage but able to drive himself into the end zone we saw him have some physical runs earlier in that first half <laughs> I'll tell you what, this team is operating such a fantastic level, but they're really struggling <laughs> with their field goal, field goal unit of making sure they get 12 guys on the field and lined up. That seems to be the most, the most challenging thing for them to do in this game. Flag flies on the play. Oh, that was fantastic right there. You saw number 90, I believe it's number 90, running around. And uh, I don't see a number 90 listed, so I'm not sure if it's 80. If it's 80 right there, it's Brian um, Haddlesey. He's running around like he was a slot back in motion right there. No flag on the play. Extra point is good. It's a 41-7 lead. 34-point advantage. 7.04 to go in the third quarter here at the 2022 Independent Pool. One point away for Thomas A. Stewart to have the clock run for the remainder of the second half. You know, we saw yesterday, uh, we say we saw uh, St. Pat's come down from Thunder Bay, and today we see Thomas A. Stewart coming in from Peterborough, right? And uh, these are areas of the province and, and parts of the country that you wouldn't necessarily equate with having significant 
you know, high level football just because the, you know, geographically those areas are not huge population bases. We think about Hamilton schools, Toronto schools, London schools, big cities, but we're seeing uh, impressive, impressive performances uh, from, from teams from some of these smaller areas. D'Amico takes the return. Nicholas Ormiston on the tackle for Thomas A. Stewart. And they will have the Kerry Blues start at their own 39-yard line. But you're absolutely right. Just some of those less known schools in, in, the, in the areas that maybe don't get seen as much by um, not only scouts, but, but people who cover high school football across the country. And Thomas A. Stewart running through their regular season at 9-0. and And probably a little bit of a chip on their shoulder that they weren't ranked uh, in the top 50 schools in the country. And then you get put into a bowl game against a team with just two wins on the season. But they come out and they've been dominant here today as Max Barrett takes the handoff. He'll get across the 50, and that'll be a first down for the Kerry Blues. Yeah, just to finish on that, like Nathan Thompson, you could you could make an argument right now, Nathan Thompson is the best player we've seen in the last day and a half. Obviously, Gregorsik yesterday from, from Holy Trinity was a special player as well, too. Uh, you know, so I'm not committing either way as to as to who the best guy is. But there's certainly some very, very talented players in some of the smaller centers uh, that, that uh, perhaps get overlooked at times. How about that stretch on the 401 and up the 115 where you have Ethan Gregorsik and Nathan Thompson spread out by about 40 minutes maybe? Yeah, yeah, quarters to Peterborough. First and 10, and they'll hand it off up the middle. Fullback Thomas Highland takes the handoff. He'll gain three. That'll bring up second and seven. And if you're St. Mike's, I mean, outside of the one kickoff return that we saw from Green, um, you know, Gavin Green early in the game, I mean, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle just to, you know, to manage the football. We've struggled with uh, quarterback to center exchange. They've, they've struggled to catch uh, kickoff returns. They've struggled on reverse exchanges on kickoff returns. We've seen receivers couple, uh, drop a couple of footballs. Um, you know, so they've just been out of sorts today in every aspect of this game. Second and six here from the 55. As Montemurro under center will play action and roll to his right. Fires downfield, and that one falls incomplete. Thomas Darling, the closest defensive back for Thomas A. Stewart. And third and six here for the Cary Blues. So there's, it was obviously boot back into the boundary, sprint out for the quarterback, back into the weak side here. His tight end released to the flat on an out route, number 87, and the wide receiver on the sideline there. I believe it's uh, number three ran, uh, uh, ran the hitch right there. It looks like Logan Wilson, but... Um, it's tough to run those plays back into the short side of the field, back into the boundary, because you can't really – there's no lateral spacing between the Will linebacker and the corner. They're both sitting as low players. The corner is a flat player. The Will is a hook curl player. There's just not a lot of room to fit those passes in. So double tight eye formation here for the Kerry Blues on third and six. Play action to Barrett. Had Wilson. It gets deflected into the air and falls down to the turf. Thomas A. Stewart will take over on downs at the 55. I mean, how many times are you going to go to the tailback screen well? You know, we, we've seen this now. I think it's like the fourth time, whether it's second or third down, right where they're going. And it's not a tailback screen this time. It's a tight end screen there to number 88 it was intended to. Uh, it appears Owen Doig, who he's, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about earlier, but you're going to have to throw the football across the line of scrimmage. You're not going to win a football game or get back into a football game uh, by throwing the ball on second down and third down at or behind the line of scrimmage. That ball's got to go down the field, Jack. So first and 10 for Thomas A. Stewart. They've not scored on one offensive possession, and it was that one that they got with 18 seconds left in the first half. And Colby Wood will drop back to pass. He'll fire downfield for Thompson, who makes the catch at the 35, and will drive himself down to the 28-yard line. So Colby Wood continuing to sling the rock and finds his favorite target, Nathan Thompson. Well, really interesting execution. You'll see uh, Parkhurst here. You see him motion across, and then he releases inside here as if he's going to lead up on an inside isolation run play. He ran the drag back across the field the other side. He's open as well, too. Thompson lining up at tight end, just runs a simple, uh, a very simple corner flat route and uh, wide open. The zone defender didn't uh, lost his leverage. It got outside of him in another significant gain. So we'll see Feely motion to the line of scrimmage. First and 10, and they'll go to Nathan Thompson. 
They'll bounce it outside. Not much room to go in. Good gang tackle there by the Cary Blues defense. Hey, breaking news. Breaking news. A gain limited to less than five yards, right? Thompson, been used to running without any traffic in his face all day. Well, that time the traffic shows up. Great, fantastic play right there by the defensive back on the play. Um, Nathan Nauman showing up and making the one-on-one -on -one solo tackle in the short side of the field. Good to see. Second and eight for Thomas A. Stewart. Haven't been forced to too many second and longs today. As Caleb Parkhurst, the receiver to the top of your screen, and Colby Wood, the quarterback, will run it himself. He'll get down to the 16-yard line, and that will be a first down for Thomas A. Stewart on the quarterback keeper. Man, it's got to be frustrating if you're one of these St. Mike's defenders, right? You're like, okay, we got to track Thompson all over the field. we got to deal with Parkhurst. Jordan Feely's had success on us. Oh, and now Colby Wood's going to keep it and run, right? The quarterback run for the first down, so... Um, you know, a challenge here, obviously. This, these guys can come at you with multiple different weapons. So they'll line up in shotgun here. Feely and Barnett, the running backs. Thompson lines up in the slot to the left. Double tight end for Colby Wood. And he'll keep it himself again. Colby Wood breaks a tackle. And he'll walk into the end zone for a Thomas A. Stewart touchdown. I mean, Thomas A. Stewart offense has been breaking tackles all day. You know, and what you see is you see St. Mike's defenders on the ground hanging on with one arm onto a jersey. You know, that's not going to cut it. You know what I mean? You got to you got to get your defenders across the bodies. You got to get these can't be arm tackles. These guys are too big and too strong. Colby Woods strong. Parkhurst is strong. Thompson strong. We've seen Feely break multiple tackles. Daniel Amos, right? You got to get a body on a body. You got to put shoulder pads on shoulder pads, chest to chest and wrap up tackle. You're not going to arm tackle these kids to the ground. 48 to 7 the score, a 41 point lead for Thomas A Stewart in the 2022 Independent Bowl. So remember, we had this situation yesterday after this kickoff, the clock will run and will not stop even if St. Mike's mounts a comeback when the Discrepancy gets above 35 points in a game. They run the clock continuously. So Thomas A. Stewart try and get some stops on defense, get the ball back, and then work that clock down before they're crowned 2022 Independent Bowl champions with a big lead here late in the third quarter. Yeah, and if you're St. Mike's, really, I mean, I understand, obviously, you're, you're not winning this football game. I think I think that's fair to say right now at this point in time, especially with the clock, uh, which is going to be in uh, run time at this point in time. You're just simply not going to get enough offensive possessions uh, in what time is left in order to be able to win this game. So really it comes down to, hey, fellas, Let's just have some pride here. Let's try and execute at a high level here for, for what we have remaining in our season here. And if you're the coaching staff, go ahead and let your quarterback and your receivers loose, man. Put those receivers down the field. Throw the ball down the field. No more tailback tight end screens. Go ahead and give them a chance to be a quarterback and throw the ball across the line of scrimmage. Vincenzo D'Amico will return it himself. Just take it right upfield. So it takes your direction after that last kickoff return up to the 37-yard line, and it will be a first down carry blues. Yeah, as I said, so Montemoro come back in here. Let's go drop back pass. Go ahead, spread formations, 32, 23, 41, uh, five wide receiver packages, whatever it happens to be. Let's just see uh, Let's just see Montemoro sling it around the field for, for what remains in this game. And this is, We talked about this last night in our game where it was a similar score. And like you said, allow Montemoreau to sling the football around because that showcases him as an athlete to the, the scouts that are still here. See, give him the opportunity to show himself in front of a number of, of universities. Mm -hmm. I agree. Montemoreau under center. And he'll toss it out to the right, Max Barrett. Gets a big block from Highland, the fullback, and he'll go down... At the line of scrimmage, so second and ten coming up here for the Cary Blues. Yeah, they? well, they got past the initial edge, right? They had about three or four guys blocking the edge defender. You'll see it right here outside the tight end. Couldn't really quite see who that was trying to make the set the edge right there. But they had four blockers. But then guess who shows up? Well, just old number 11, Nathan Thompson, shows up unblocked. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's not going to miss too many tackles. So he's able to limit the gain to, uh, to nothing in that play. Injured Thomas A. Stewart player down on the field at the Cary Blues 31-yard line. And I think it was the edge defender who initially got blocked by the three or four players. Again, I couldn't, even on the replay, I couldn't see the number. 
So I, I wasn't quite sure whether it was a defensive end or a second-level linebacker that was stepping up uh, to try and take on those blocks. But he had three or four guys come come get him on his own, which obviously then freed up the you know freed up the next level uh, Thompson coming through untouched. Sitting up straight for Thomas A. Stewart, which is good to see for Hayden Barker, the yeah. defensive lineman. There we go. We can see his jersey number now. Well, I'll tell you what. He sacrificed. He took on four guys, <laughs> right, which means there's going to be other defenders running free because uh, you counted for, count for him. So he sold out for his team and looks like he paid a little bit of a price there. But with him sitting up, hopefully it's not anything too serious. And they'll help him up to his feet, and he'll walk off to the sideline under his own power. Yep, and that's what he's saying. He just shook his head and said, no. He said, look, I'm not taking on four guys anymore. <laughs> I did my job. Now I'll get a bit of a break here as second and ten coming up for the Kerry Blues from their own 36-yard line. After that run from Max Barrett was strung out by the Thomas A. Stewart defense. Well, you know, I talked about coming out and spread. They came right back out in the to start the drive in the double tight end formation again. And it looks like they're sticking with it. A lot of players in the box. If they're throwing here, look at you come off a of play action out of this I formation, Jack. They're under center. Montemuro dropped the snap, and he's down on the ground, dropped to a knee. So that'll be a loss of one, third and 11 here coming up for St. Mike's. Oh, boy, when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. We've talked about quarterback center exchanges. They've had a struggle with them when they've been in shotgun. Snaps have been high, snaps have been low. This time you got the quarterback right under right under center it can't get any easier for you but they you know they have that struggle with it again it looks like they're going to bring the punt unit in they're not trying to give thomas a stewart another short field to work with and this will be the final play of the third quarter barring a penalty and thomas a stewart will get the ball back up by 41. And they'll send back caleb parkhurst and miles saligo do they run return. do they run a fake here do they dare run a fake here Thomas A. Stewart playing with the three returners back again. They're short in the front. Third and 11 from your own 35. As Parkhurst doesn't field it cleanly. He gets down to the 55, and that will end the third quarter. 48-7, to Thomas A. Stewart leads St. Mike's College. We'll have the fourth quarter of the 2022 Independent Bowl coming up next on Griffision. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. Welcome back. Fourth quarter of the 2022 Independent Bowl, and Thomas A. Stewart is less than 12 minutes away from being crowned Offset Champions. As Wood gets hit hard, ball loose on the turf. And we'll see who comes up with it. It will be Thomas A. Stewart jumping on the ball. Colby Wood got hammered off that far edge and a loss of five will bring up second and 15. Yeah, I think it was Nicholas Kunde Lenny, who we saw go out of the game uh, late in the third quarter there with the injury, comes off the edge offside the tight end at the top of the screen. You see him flash right there. Physical presence. Thomas A. Stewart was running a fake hitch screen and go right and i think they had it open right the defensive backs bit on the hit screen but the challenge with that play is it takes a little bit longer to develop because you've got to pump fake the short throw and then throw the deep one and that allowed uh, kunde lenny time to get to the quarterback second and 15 for thomas a stewart from their own 50. they'll hand it off to feely he has room to run feely driving forward will get to the line to gain a flag flies and this will more than likely be in the area of holding yeah. against thomas a stewart. yeah i imagine that's what we're going to see as well too but what i really like there is how feely finished that run dropped his shoulder pad level and went into the defender he was insistent there that he was going to be the hammer and not the nail he was going to be the one doling out the the finish on that run yardage would have picked up a first down but it is holding against thomas a stewart And they're going to bring him back 10 from the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be 
Second and 25 coming up for Thomas A. Stewart. But as they sit here right now, I don't feel like this is out of their range to pick up a first down. No. You know, when I talked about how Jordan Feely finished that run, I'm actually impressed with Lucas Kovar. I mean, he was hanging on for dear life, but he did bring him down on a one-on-one -on -one tackles. That's a good job for Lucas right there. If you're going to be the nail instead of the hammer, you might as well take the hammer down. Absolutely. Nice analogy. I like that there. That's good. Second and 25 for Thomas A. Stewart. Under 10 minutes to go as they'll hand it off to Thompson. Not a whole lot of room, but he bounces it back to the outside. Thompson has the edge, but he gets chopped down at the 50, and a flag flies behind the play. Yeah, was that Colby Wood? That's going to get, like, how many? When do you see a quarterback called for a legal block in the back? And Nathan Thompson is limping off to the Thomas A. Stewart sideline. Yeah, I'm hoping that's just a cramp there for him but you see you see what like when was the last time jack have you ever seen a quarterback called for a legal block in the back and he didn't even need to thompson was already past the defender it was unnecessary block he's just trying to help his teammate out do a little bit more for him in that situation you just gotta you know from your decision making process you just gotta know hey i got i gotta keep my hands off this guy block in the back against thomas a stewart is the call but they will decline the penalty as it was a gain of 10 so that brings up third and 15 so thomas a stewart will give the ball back to the carry blues and St. Mike's actually did a good job there on the front side with that play initially that was working towards the short side here in the boundary of, of really giving Thompson nowhere to run forcing him to cut back of course he's an elite enough runner that he's able to find the room on that backside and gain some yardage off there but it was a good job by uh, of, by St. Mike's there of, of cutting off that back or that front side Colby Wood will boot this one away and a high kick will Go off the hand of Gavin Green at his own 10. He'll bring it up the field. Green has a bit of an edge on the outside. He breaks away from Parkhurst before stepping out at the 31. Well, Parkhurst just needs to come a little bit further upfield on that situation, right? He's, he's essentially playing the gunner to the wide side of the field, and so it's his job and responsibility to make sure that that returner cannot get outside of him. He's got to funnel it back into the middle field. We'll see it here in a second. Obviously, the inability to catch the ball in the air is going to hurt him a little bit there, Green. But as he starts to work that way, we'll see right there. You see number two. He can't settle his feet. He's got to continue to come upfield and force that returner to cut back into where all his help is. He can't get to let him get outside and hit the sideline. And in all of that, how about that punt from Colby Wood? We talk about Nathan Thompson being able to do it all, but Colby Wood, quarterback of this team, and Big leg there on the punt as Gavin Green catches the flat pass, but he's taken down immediately by Alex LaBelle. So a gain of one will bring up second and nine. Well, LaBelle's sitting out there as a cut corner, right? They're playing a, a, a cover three shell. Both halfbacks are high. The corners are the low players in the flat. So as soon as that ball's thrown to the flat, the corner's going to flash. He's going to be right there. When you've got both halfbacks playing high, you want to hit in kind of in between the will and the corner, uh, just inside the numbers in that little seam area. The short flat route's going to be tough when that corner's sitting low. Second and nine for the Cary Blues from their own 32-yard line. Montemuro drops back to pass, fires, and that one is complete and brought up to the 44. Sorry, that's not Montemuro in that quarterback. It's Rain Kreskowitz. As that yardage was good enough for a carry Blues first down. And they executed what I just talked about they needed to do in the boundary, right? They're playing the double, they're playing double cut with the corners low and the halfbacks high. You got to hit that little seam in between the linebacker and the corner. That's what they did to the wide side of the field right there. So Montemurro lines up in the slot back. Rain Kreskowitz will line up at quarterback. He hauls in the snap. Trying to get away from pressure, but he won't be able to. Getting home that time for the Thomas A. Stewart defense was Malachi Van Gills. Yeah, I'm not sure here initially where he comes from. Uh, he comes through the strong, or sorry, the weak side B gap. Weak side B gap completely unblocked, unaccounted for, and doesn't give the quarterback time to, to find any of his receivers before he's under pressure. Van Gills, the linebacker, and the information given by the coaching staff. Got his eyes on Wilfred Laurier, who's produced some strong linebackers over the last number of years. Yeah, defensive coordinator Ron Van Moorkirk always got a strong defensive group. Kreskowitz finds Montemuro. That's a gain of 11, but it'll bring up third and nine 
after that loss of 10 on the previous play. Well, listen, you're gonna, there's going to be openings here. There's going to be an opportunity to throw the ball for a first down because uh, Thomas Stewart is consistently showing that, that cover three double cut, okay? So the halfbacks are high. So you're going to have to look to hit three strong, two strong, or two weak here in terms of your receiver numbers. Looks like they're coming out in a 23 formation. So you're going to have to hit one of those inside slots either the field to the boundary because that's where the hole is. And looking to the right, and that is caught by Montemurro at the sticks. He gets down to the Thomas A. Stewart 50. And that's what he ran. He ran the hitch to too strong. Montemora went up and got it right in that hole between the Sam linebacker and the corner. We'll see it here. Does a good job of looking to the boundary first, coming back to his second read. Get, and he's very fortunate that he threw it high enough that Montemora was the only one that could go up and get it, but they moved the sticks here. First and 10 from the Thomas A. Stewart 50 for St. Mike's College, who's under four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Kreskowitz. Drops back, pump fakes, fires downfield, incomplete, great play in open field by Malachi Van Gills to knock that one down. Yeah, great job by Van Gills, a carry in three in the seam right there. It was an excellent uh, effort to go get that football by Gabriel Furia, but you'll see, you'll see Van Gills carries three in the seam right here. When I say three, I'm talking about the number three receiver, not jersey number three, as he tries to run that vertical up the seam, Van Gills carries it. So he's not able to get that, fit that ball in there underneath the safety. So we saw him get the sack, and then we see him playing deep coverage from that strong linebacker spot. Second and 10 for the Kerry Blues. Kreskowitz fires, and that one caught by Gavin Green. Gain of four will bring up third and six. Yeah, just quick out route to the field. The boundary corner there, number 23, Alex Abel. We talked about him playing cut coverage over there a little bit where he's the short side flat defender, and he is again, but there's two receivers outside, and he jumps inside. He's got to stay outside and protect that flat. So a third and six. Line to gain is the 40 for the Kerry Blues as Kres uh, Kre Krekowitz Lines up in shotgun. Krekowitz looks to his left, fires, and Montemurro makes the catch three yards past the line to gain, and a first down on the gain of nine. I don't know, man. I think Montemurro's looking pretty good as a receiver. Maybe they should have come out with this combination of, of personnel for uh, for the whole game. Of course, right now, Thomas Stewart's not giving them any kind of pressure. They're playing a, you know, kind of an umbrella, a prevent defense type coverage. They're going to give them those short intermediate throws. You know, they're not worried about giving those up. But to this point in time, the Kreskowitz to uh, Montemurro combination is, has been the most offense they've generated all day. Kreskowitz drops back to pass. Van Gills with pressure, but he gets it away, and it's tipped up and almost intercepted by Ricky Bevan. Oh, Ricky. He's, he's going to be on the bus going back to Peterborough wishing, the man, I, I should have had that one. It was literally right in his hands. He's got both hands on it. It's actually a very nice throw, but just, you know, as you see, as I mentioned, they're going to be willing to give up some things. They're playing very conservatively, so the linebackers are getting deep drops. The safeties, the defensive backs are over the top. So there's very tight windows on those deep throws for the quarterback to have to fit the football in at this point. Under two minutes to go here in the 2022 Independent Bowl. 48-7 to as Max Barrett takes the handoff, and he'll cut forward, breaking a tackle, and Malachi Van Gills will make the tackle after the gain of 11 on the Max Barrett run. Yeah, good play call. Obviously, they've been throwing the ball on every single down. We talked about the linebackers are going to be playing with a little bit more depth. That opens up some of the running lanes right here, right? And they take advantage of it, get a good gain there. Max Barrett doing a good job moving the sticks, getting the first down. So just 80 seconds to go in the game, 48-7, to seven, Thomas A. Stewart leading, and... St. Mike's putting together the best offensive drive of the game as Krekowitz fires the screen for the running back, Max Barrett, but it falls incomplete, second and ten. Yeah, one of the challenges when, when, you're, when you're playing the screen game is, is that the quarterback has got to loft the football, right? What, what the offensive line is doing is they're allowing those pass rushers to come through. They're drawing them up. What that means is, though, for the quarterback, he's got those hands right in his face and so he's got to loft that ball over, and right now he's trying to throw it on a rope. Barrett, as you can see, is not the tallest running back in the world, right? So you gotta you got to kind of float that thing in there. You can't throw it on a rope. Pass complete to Logan Wilson. Makes a man miss at the 20. Will be taken down at the 17-yard line, which will be a yard short of the line to gain. So it'll be third down, and I'd imagine that 
Terry Blues are going to take a timeout here. So I was going to say this would be the final play of the game based on where the clock was, but they stopped the clock with 24.4 seconds to go. Well, they want to finish on a positive note, right? They want to they want to try and get this score. Obviously, this game in no way, shape, or form has, has gone as they had planned or as they had liked. And so you want to, you know, you want to get on that bus and go back home with taking some type of positive out of it. And I can I certainly can say how they've played offensively here in the last couple minutes, specifically uh, with Grekowitz at quarterback here is is something that uh, you know that they can be happy with. So hopefully for them they can get this in the end zone here. Third and one coming up for the Kerry Blues is Rain Krekowitz came in in this fourth quarter on this drive at quarterback for Luke Montemuro, who has lined up in the slot as a receiver and been his primary receiving target on this drive. Yeah, I think you got to anticipate. I mean, they're going to get, you know, they're going to get another play out of this right here, assuming this play doesn't last for 24 and a half seconds. Uh, they're going to get another play, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get two shots to the end zone here in back-to-back plays. Third and one, Kerry Blues under center, and Krekowitz will just take a quarterback keeper and down to the six-yard line, so he gets down. And Kerry Blues take another timeout with 16 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Okay, interesting decision right there, right? Go under center, spread the defense out. you got three receivers on the wide side of the field, two receivers on the boundary. Obviously now this is going to be your last uh, – you know, this is this is going to be your last play or two here. They got to get the football into the end zone. Got another, get, another timeout here. Should get two plays here. They'll get one off, and then again, like you said on the last one, this one shouldn't last 16 seconds. So they'll be allowed to take one more play after that, unless there's a turnover, of course. But the Kerry Blues trying to finish this off again, like you said, on a positive note after a, a really dominant performance by Thomas A. Stewart today. You can't call it anything but. You can't call it anything but. It would be interesting to be able to see like a Thomas uh, Thomas A. Stewart play against the Holy Trinity, uh, play against a Bear Creek, very competitive game that we saw yesterday. It would be interesting to see them play against, uh, you know, St. Pat's that we saw from, uh, from Thunder Bay. I think those would be very competitive games. Maybe we can get it set up for next year's kickoff classic. There we go, yeah. Thomas A. Stewart going to Holy Trinity or Holy Trinity going up to Thomas A. Stewart as Krekowitz will look to the end zone and fire. That is incomplete just inside the goal line, but unable to make the catch was Montemuro. Yeah, I think he put it right on the number. I think he literally hit him right in the middle of the six here, Jack, but Montemuro wasn't able to bring it in. So we'll get one more play here in the 2022 Independent Bowl. Thomas A. Stewart will be victorious, but final score still to be decided with the Kerry Blues on the six-yard line. Krekowitz in shotgun, looks to his right, and lost the football. Thomas A. Stewart's defense stands up. Oh, if you had seen a little bit earlier, Max Barrett was wide open in the flat. The tailback swing pass, he wasn't accounted for, but he, by the time he had started to get his vision working from the field side back to the boundary, the pass rush got through and dropped him to end the game. Thomas A. Stewart victorious in the 2022 Independent Bowl. A dominant 48-7 win over St. Mike's College to start day number two of our off Bowl Festival. And you can look at a couple guys, but mostly Nathan Thompson with all the touchdowns that he had in the game, two through the air, two on the ground, and, and really just one of the most complete players we've seen so far in the first four games of this festival. He absolutely is, and that, uh, that Thomas A. Stewart bus may have to wait a little bit longer for all the coaches to finish, uh, all the university coaches to finish talking to Thompson before they can get out of here. We have an exciting one coming up next. It's going to be Huron Heights against Sir Wilfred Laurier from London, the number one ranked team in the nation against the number seven ranked team in the nation, second highest ranked team from Ontario. So this one Coming up next between Huron Heights and Sir Wilfred Laurier has a lot on the line. Thomas A. Stewart wins the 2022 Independent Bowl, 48-7 over St. Mike's College. We'll be back at 1.30 for the next game between Huron Heights and Wilfred Laurier. Thanks for joining us on Griff Vision.